through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that by His grace we might be put right with God and come into possession of the eternal life we hope for. <clears throat> Lift us up, O God our Savior. O Lord, open our lips. Praise the Lord. Our hymn of praise. Church hymn book 429. Church hymn 415. Page 3 of our program. The first, third, and last stanzas. Chairperson for Kumba Presbytery, <coughs> dear colleagues, dear brothers and sisters, our God is faithful. Yes, Mr. Moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon and Chairman of the Administrative Council of the PTS, we thank God for giving us another unique opportunity to celebrate this day. We welcome you all to this dual occasion of graduation and authorization of those who were entrusted to our care for ministerial training and theological formation some years ago. 
We thank you, dear moderator. We thank you, Senator Clark. We thank the financial secretary, the secretary committee of the ministry, for your support. We thank you, dear faculty members. We thank you, the auxiliary staff, for your courage. We thank you, our dear spouses, for your encouragement. We thank you, dear students, for your assiduity and discipline. With faith, we have come thus far. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Dear moderator, this message of thanks explains why this batch has been christened the batch of faith. For the past four years, all our activities have been guided by faith. I will not enumerate them, but the summary of our experiences is that by faith, we are here to witness the authorization of these young men and women into the ministry of God and sacraments and to graduate the others. <coughs> Therefore, permit me to use this opportunity, sir, to welcome you to the BTS campus after your election as moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon. Can we have a We welcome you, the Senate Club, the Reverend Mickey Hans Abia, for joining the Board of Faith as Chairman, as Vice Chairman of the Administrative Council. In absentia, we welcome the Reverend Emmanuel B. Maso to this holy ground as Secretary Committee of the Ministry. Sir, it is by faith that the PTS community members, that is the administrative staff, the teaching staff, the auxiliary staff, our spouses, and the student body are witnessing this dual location, which is unique in the life of the PTS. In fact, for those who know the history of the PTS, the journey has been long. If you can recall it, the Senior Clerk, if you can recall it, you graduated from the PTS ground. It was celebrated here, I think behind there. From there, we moved to Fiango, then to Kosala PTS. And last year, we went to Kumbambe. And now we are back to the PTS ground. This is a journey of faith for which we thank God. Mr. Moderator, sir. During this worship service, we will present to you 23 laborers to be authorized to serve as assistant pastors. We will equally present two set of students for graduation. We have 36 students who are graduated with a Bachelor of Theology degree. From among the 36, there are 28 from our regular program, uh, 23 from our regular program, four external candidates, and eight other workers of the church who came in for top to top up the academic level. Besides these 36, we also have 11 students who are graduating with a Master of Theology degree. These students have been churned by faithful, courageous, and hardworking seasoned lecturers whom I will present to you shortly. May I also use this opportunity to appreciate the generosity of many colleagues, Christians and congregations, who braved all the odds in order to bring us food. We remain so much indebted to you. Immense thanks to the administration of Kumbatu <coughs> Municipality, as well as the Friends of the sem Seminary for supporting our faith. And now to the dynamic female pastors of the PCC. May I ask your indulgence to stand, please. These strong women of faith have offered to the community and have had handed over to the chairman of the administrative council and moderator of the PCC an edifice whose architecture has no equal in the PCC. We want 
to thank the pioneer Reverend Dr. Perpetua Fonti, Ma Reverend Ngwa Agnes, and now Ma Reverend Mr. <coughs> Felicia, for inspiring our mothers, our sisters, and our colleagues to leave another legacy on our campus. Now, pending your approval, and thank God you approved this morning, you would have found the inscription, we had Christian it, leave her alone. We wanted you to validate it. If you had done so before, we would have written it there. Since you did it this morning, we will do so. So the building is Christian, leave her alone. The Vice Dean in Church of Students Affairs, Reverend Gobo Dibo Matthias and Madam. The Registrar, Reverend Dr. Felix Kang and Madam. The Chaplain, Reverend Kongwe Emmanuel, Madam Ms. Mbamenda. The Librarian, Reverend Ba Fomijang and Madam. Oh, she's at work. Oh, she's there. Lecturer, Reverend Tanto Christina. <coughs> ICT coordinator, Reverend Benton. Uh, he had a little malaise this morning. He has been rushed to the hospital. I'm sure he's with Madam. Reverend Dr. Benoniwang, Janet, and Mr. <laughs> Committed. Reverend Dr. Koso Pascal. Reverend Sai Godlov and Madam. Reverend Neba Collins and Madam. Madam may not be here. Okay, Reverend Neba was the driver to the hospital. Or is the driver to the hospital? Reverend Tom Tem Godlov and Madam. Reverend Saibo Lamsi and Madam. Madam is around. Okay, I thought you were still serving the other one. Welcome. <coughs> Reverend Ekoko Divine. Reverend Dr. Difongu Honorine and Reverend Difongu Goffrey. Reverend Dr. Nyugi Peter Sisi, I think he left for Bamenda early this morning. Reverend Boge Paul could not come because of other commitments. Panso, Panso, never tired. Panso was in here. Okay. Uh, the others are not here, even Dr. Ntiteme Chaloman, Dr. Wang, Judges, Dr. Eugene Wang of UK, Dr. Leonga Agnes. Please, all the support staff, they use just right. All the auxiliary, all the auxiliary staff, I'm sure they are, they are outside. Please, uh, please, uh, the people who have bring all the odds out in security by faith in order to make things happen in this day. May God bring you the reward.
The moderator, the Sino Clark, the members of the entourage of the moderator, the dean of the Pertinent Theological Seminary, members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. This morning, we are privileged to carry out these various exercises as have been enumerated. But before I present the graduates, I just have these few words of exhortation to give them before the presentation. There's this text of Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 12, verse 12. It says, Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation or in affliction. Be constant in prayer. This text to me shows our attitude or what attitude to take in any of the events or circumstances that may come our way. We rejoice when we are hopeful, when we know. We rejoice when we are hopeful, when we know deep in our hearts that our Redeemer leader. Therefore, we can go through any situation joyfully. Our attitude to joy in all the senses of the world. We are patient when we face affliction, when we face adverse conditions. Especially in times of the past. We may not be Christian about the part of faith. But by faith, we face each day, not knowing what the next day will hold for us. Time and again, we have to change the program. And it was the duty of this office, <coughs> the office of advising the academic affairs. We are changing those programs according to circumstances. And by faith, we are able to meet those programs. That's why we are here. And what kept us going was constant prayer. We knew that we could not harm on our own. Prayers. I believe that after this graduation, after this authorization, you are going to the field, equipped according to our own standards, because we did what we could do to fulfill the two forms of education, educare and ducere. Latin words, the educare is the one we thought by our vision we could carry you on for a pastoral formation. The vision of knowing that if this number of courses are done, if this 
number of credit points are validated, then this student should be right for an award of a Bachelor of Theology. That was according to our own vision. It is a form of education that did not take into account that we, by our way of passing on knowledge, try also to get something out of you by our discussions in class. We were able to tap some of the talents in you or bring out the talents in you. And we are still praying that as we go to the field, bring out the talents in you for God's sake. And we blended all of us with the non-formal and informal through our conferences, through Thursday lectures. And through the various activities that were carried out in the campus, we did non-formal education. And we believe that this were aspects to give you the holistic form of education. So they can keep the same. <coughs> You can be creative when situations have changed, just as you have been creative when situations have changed in the course of your formation. Therefore, I want to end this with these three words. It is not your attitude, or not your aptitude, but it is your attitude towards various situations in peace that will lead to you to have a right attitude attitude with God. Not your aptitude, but your attitude will lead you to have a greater attitude with God. With these words, I want to present the students Beginning by presenting the three topmost from the Bachelors of Theology and from the Masters of Theology. I will present the three first, then I present the rest of the students as is the habit of things to be done during occasions like this. From the Bachelor of Theology, We had these students who are shown in their cumulative GPA. We have Endum Alvin Abinde. She had a cumulative GPA of. 3.87. Seconded by a CN Divine Funded.
Queen of the others. And it's a good thing. It is. These are those who are to serve with the bachelors of theology. Then we go to the masters. By the powers conferred upon us by the Administrative Council of the Presbyterian Theological Seminary, Kumba, we now award you a degree of theology.
of that marriage. We have Ma Winifred. These are those who are with the master theology.
hear the word of God as it is written in the prophetic book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, the verses 27 to 32. Joel chapter 2, the verses 27 to 32. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord, you are God. And that there is never again will my people be shamed. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the saviors whom the Lord calls. This is the word of the Lord. Here the second lesson from the word of God as it is written in the gospel according to John in the 14th chapter beginning at the 23rd verse. John chapter 14 to 27 Jesus replied if anyone loves me he will obey my teaching my father will love him and we will come to him and make our he who does not love me will not obey my teaching these words you hear are not my own they belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, who I will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I leave to you. Not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. May the Lord bless to us the living of his holy word. The Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world, and he who holds all things together knows all languages. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. <clears throat> God our Father in heaven, who bless every name for this moment of faith, where after many years of struggle, we can be able to send forth these children for service. We pray, Lord, that on this very unique day in the Christian calendar, may the power of the Holy Spirit fall afresh <coughs> on these children, that they will go forth empowered to transform the world and to expand the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Dear God's people, we continue to read God's word from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. We'll read the first 21 verses. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, the verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews, who from every nation who were from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in the wilderness, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, near Serene, Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. Then sun, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Dear God's people, I cannot remember any time that an authorization has fallen on Pentecost. And I think this is a unique event 
to these who are sending forth into the world. By God's divine plan, they have already been empowered before they ever step out of this place of learning to become masters of the knowledge they have acquired in this place. And so on this day, I want us to meditate on the theme, In the Spirit, Change the World. In the Spirit, Change the World. In the Spirit, because if you have been empowered, you go out there as one who will change things through the power of the Spirit. <coughs> Dearly beloved in Christ, there has never been any trying time in our lives, in our history, as we experience today. To have come to this day that we are graduating these young, vibrant, and promising ministers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a miracle to the church. We have really passed through very trying and uncertain times in the training of these servants of the Most High God. From the deadly threats and harassment of both lecturers and students to stop schooling, to the coronavirus or COVID-19 that abruptly stopped not only schooling, but the worship of Almighty God. We are graduating these ministers at a time when our world seems to have relegated God to the background in preference for leisure and clubbing activities. <laughs> to have come to this memorable day only needed divine intervention, wisdom, tact, perseverance, endurance, and resilience. To these who do our hearts in appreciation to the dean and faculty members, students and the seminary community. Dear graduating students, you are leaving school at a very crucial, challenging moment. Your own time is different and challenging, rocking our present and threatening our future. Are you going to live up to the challenges to get lost within the turbulent world? The narrative of our text is full of divine historical background, buried in the prophetic utterances of the prophets of old, with Prophet Joel's words coming to pass. These words were dramatically and particularly fulfilled in the lifetime of the apostles. This laid the foundation of the Christian church, which Jesus Christ had promised to build that will last forever. The day of this great landmark was the day of Pentecost, also known as the Feast of Weeks, because it was ending a month of period of festivals like the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover Feast. The Feast of Pentecost celebrated on the 10th day after the ascension of Jesus Christ to heaven had a historical and an agricultural significance. Historically, this was the day that Moses received the commandments from the Lord God on Mount Sinai. And agriculturally, it was the day of the celebration of the first wheat harvest, Numbers 28, 26. Every Jew from within 20 miles from Jerusalem was by law and tradition bound to attend the Pentecost festival. So the feast usually attracted a huge Jewish crowd coming not only from within Jerusalem, but from the diaspora. Others also came 
but for commercial reasons. Dr. Luke tells us that the apostles were empowered by the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost. While the old Pentecost was the giving of the written law on tablets and the celebration of the first harvest of wheat, the new Pentecost was a dispensation of the law of grace by the power of the Holy Spirit for global evangelization and the empowerment of the first apostles to harvest the souls of men all over the world for the Lord. It was the birthday of the Christian church, the church militant, and the empowerment of this church to evangelize the world in word and action for the church triumphant. King Solomon and Ogo rightly put it that where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. The vision and journey to the church triumphant had started on that day of Pentecost. The apostles were empowered to proclaim life and deliverance on those children enslaved by the forces of darkness. While they were empowered to break new grounds and shake off the shackles of the old narratives of the dominance and oppression of the past of emperors, kings, and governors, they were also empowered to establish a new paradigm shift in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear graduating students, you are those first faithful men and women, the vision bearers of the ascended Lord Jesus Christ, to show the right way to a world that has chosen the wrong way and are trading it to self and divine destruction. You are coming to ministry at a time of unprecedented national and global crisis after more than a century. Of the inhuman war of destruction and insecurity in Anglophone Cameroon are unacceptable and unbearable. Some of you will experience this as you go out to the stations you have to serve. To turn and fit the home for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The ravaging and complex nature of the COVID-19 has put the world in a state of fright, panic, and uncertainty and paradigm. And you are expected dear graduating students, to face these challenges and give hope to a perishing, hopeless, and helpless world. Even more disturbing is the way this COVID-19 is managed in our country. Its restrictions have targeted many places of worship and learning, while places of drinking and dancing are rather encouraged <clears throat> Even more challenging is the fact that this viral pandemic is shrouded in obscurity, stigmatization, victimization, political manipulation, and economic exploits with different using and extraordinary narratives within and without. This is a challenging and complex context, you have been called to minister and evangelize from different parishes to the whole country, Africa, and the world. On this day of your authorization into this difficult and challenging field, full of ripe crops, let us borrow from the speech of the 72-year-old American Hollywood actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, commonly known as Commando or Terminator, former governor of the California State, USA. When at the May 2020 viral commencement of students, Fox News reported that 
holding his doctoral frame certificate in his hand, Arnold Schwarzenegger had this to say, and I quote, this is nothing, the actor declared while holding the framed degree. I mean, we all have these pieces of paper, but let's be honest. This celebration, by the way, is not the end. Yes, it is the end of this particular chapter, but it is the beginning of your next climb. It is time to celebrate now, be in the moment, all out, yes, of course. But tomorrow, when this is all over, it's time to start developing your vision and it's time to start climbing towards your vision. End of course. Dear friends, your Toulouse training with your certificate is just the chapter one of your ministerial pilgrimage in the thick clouds of global and national uncertainties. These are the last days that the Lord said that I will pour out my spirit on all people for young men and women like you to see visions, win and change for his perfection and you cannot climb the ladder of your own vision with the same worthless and hopeless narrative but you must keep your certificates aside and engage your ministerial climb and destiny with a new narrative of hope buried in the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit that has been poured upon you. You have been born out of the shackles of a twin crisis, the Anglophone crisis that has paralyzed every vibrant activity in the Anglophone community, and the emerging coronavirus that is killing people in their hundreds of thousands like a biological weapon that has been sprayed upon humanity. A virus that has overtly been tailored to target the supremacy of the Most High God and His worship in our own context. You have been born to commence the <coughs> ministerial journey on the day of Pentecost, a divine plan of coincidence to empower you for the enormous challenges that will come, that will welcome you in the field. By the power of the Holy Spirit, preach the word of God that will heal God's people and deliver God's children from sin, oppression, and hopelessness. By his power, point people to see the light of salvation when everyone is compared to see the darkness of destruction. By his power, you are bound to overturn altars and change oppressors to servants of the Most High God and free those who have been captured by the sins of this world. By his anointing, you are a soldier of Christ in these battles and wars of life. Therefore, I urge you with these words of the Jubilee songwriter who lived between 1834 and 1924, Sabin Barry Gould, who said, Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going before, Christ, the royal master, leads his army on, forward into battle till the fight is won. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. You have to allow the Holy Spirit of God enable you to march on into the difficulties of life. March on 
and do the things that God's Spirit will lead you to do. March on as true soldiers of Christ and transform the world. Have no fear. As you go out there, the boys will be there. You know the boys I'm talking about. <laughs> COVID-19 will be there. And other crises will be there. You might be going to a place where the whole village and parish is deserted. March on, march on as a soldier of Christ. And do not fear what is ahead of you. Because as you move on, Christ is ahead directing you. God bless you. It is time now for us to bring them back to you. With the permission of the Snot Luck, after the staffing committee, these persons who are about to be authorized and whom we are about to present to the moderator for authorization were posted to the following places. When you hear your name, you take your position here. Please, we clap at the end, or if you are so excited, you wait. Alota Victorine, posted to Nguankuma in Tuba Boyo, President. Atia Yannick, who posted to Banta Kwa in Jikwa, President. Awudu Mama Terence, Terence Ayo. Park posted to Basho in Akwaya Presbytery. Ebai Ashu Gislen Ebai posted to Bamuso Indian Presbytery. Endum Alvin Abinde posted to Anon in Batibo Presbytery. Asian Divine Fondem posted to Balundu in Mongo Presbytery. Esso Randolph Akwe posted to Bonam Buffet in the Presbytery. Esso Lodson Etime posted to Baba One in the Presbytery. Echi Eno Ebot posted to Elambe in Bakosi North Presbytery. 
for Zaurum Zotar Janda, posted to Chuk and Kenfu in Donga Mantu, friends with him. Mbamexi friend, posted to Echo in Chikwa, friends with him. Bujera Kwabo, posted to Mwa in Donga Mantu, friends with him. Wang Kang Ruth, posted to Obam in Bafut, Presbyterian. Muma Olivia, posted to Inko in Bakosi North, Presbyterian. Dobayapane Shulet, posted to Sabis in the Bialam Opa Bayam, Presbyterian. Nyafia Felix, Fikyo, Posted to Fakumba, to Big Mbandi, to my presbytery. Sama Munje, posted to Anjake, in Akwaya presbytery. Tabot Ebot Stephen, posted to Asaka, in Akwaya presbytery. Tani Sheka, Posted to Booth in my friend's Tata Alexander Joker. Posted to CPA in Donga Mantu Presby. Tata Solomon Fogwe. Posted to Fosimon D in Libya Lam Papa Bayam Presby. Tembe Runa. Runa. Tembe. Posted to Dienge Batanga in Tukume Presbytery. To mentor Alain Sophie. Posted to Fang in Mentum Presbytery. Mr. Moderator said, they are capable of doing the work. <laughs> we have finished our assignment and now we hand them over to you. They are really capable and that is why some of them have two parishes. So they are capable, sir. Please turn and face the sanctuary. Can step behind me. Come back here. Dear God's people, here present before God's sanctuary are those we wish to authorize to do full pastoral work, including the administration of the sacraments and the ordinances of the church after they have been examined, found worthy, and approved by the appropriate body of the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon. But first, let us hear what the Word of God says about the Gospel ministry. In the second letter to St. Paul to Timothy, we read, Do not be ashamed of testifying to our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but take your share of suffering for the Gospel in the power of God, who saved us and called us with the holy calling not in virtue of our works, but in virtue of his own purpose and the grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus ages ago and now has manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher, and therefore, I as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm sure that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard the truth that has been entrusted to you by the Holy Spirit 
who dwells within you. Dear sisters, dear brothers in the ministry, before God and this congregation and before your family members, I now ask you, do you promise to devote your time and strength for the pastoral work, including the administration of the sacraments and ordinances of the church, with diligence and to maintain good conduct among all God's people? If this is your promise, you will raise your right hand and say, I promise God be my helper. I promise God be my helper. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your holy apostles that it pleases you that through our preaching of the word of the cross, you will save those who believe in it. We therefore beseech you, grant your Holy Spirit to these your daughters and sons, that they thus blessed by you may ever perform their pastoral duties for which we now authorize them and strengthen them by your divine power that they remain firm in faith in spite of all trials and temptations of their own flesh, the world and the devil. Give them zeal to shepherd your flock which you have redeemed by the precious blood of your dear son with your life giving word and sacrament and to lead the same in holy Christian living, by their own example and conduct, for the honor and glory of your most holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear sisters, dear brothers, after we have read the word of God and called upon you, and call upon him in prayer for you, I now authorize you to do full pastoral work, including the administration of the holy sacraments and ordinances in the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, and in token thereof, I will not give you a right hand of fellowship, but I will wave and ask that God to bless you. Now, dear friends in the ministry, Go forth and do your work in that love with which our Lord has loved us in giving up himself for us. Be a faithful witness to his gospel and a worthy administrator of his sacrament. Encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all, rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks in all circumstances. And you, dear people of God, as we have witnessed this act of authorization of our sisters and brothers in the faith, receive them and continue to pray for them and show them love. Honor them as the ministers of Christ and support them in whatever possible way you think fit, so that their work amongst God's people will bear much fruit for God's glory. We pray that you support them and continue to encourage them in this very difficult and delicate ministry of word and sacrament. And may God, in the power of his spirit, keep us connected and keep us as one family as we do everything to expand his kingdom. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will also ask now the officiating ministers to come and stand here and wave them. <laughs> <laughs> and the lecturers, please, since we cannot read because of the COVID-19. So as it's not like to leave the rest in the way <laughs> <laughs> Please and also wave the congregation. <laughs> Extraordinary circumstances warrant extraordinary measures. 
so would crave the indulgence that we have just the spouses of the newly authorized to come and welcome their spouses. Go only to your spouse. <laughs> just before you come, please. Just wait, wait, wait. We have the certificate of authorization here. And from the moderator's office, we have a special book for each one of you who has the secretary to the moderator to do the distribution.
children, shoot the eyes. Oh, you shoot the eyes. Hey, shoot. Behind. Nobody should stand in front of me. Nobody should stand in front of me. Daddy, where, where can they take a push on? Let we'll them shoot behind. Shoot behind, please. Go behind, please. Behind. All of them go behind. Send them behind.
Fudi! 